40 Days of Prayer, Serving with Each Other Philippians 2, Week 5, Day 2 Philippians 2 tells us that our attitude as Christians should be like that of Christ Jesus, one marked by humility, where we consider others before we consider ourselves. I am convicted that all too often, I consider the calling of Christ as an exclusively individual calling. What has Christ called me to do? What has He gifted me to do? However, Philippians reminds us that Christ's calling is to serve those around us as He modeled for us. Jesus humbly and faithfully served his family of disciples and considered their needs as more important than his own. He spent his life humbly, graciously, and patiently serving them, though he could have easily fulfilled his mission without them. In seeking to live out the call of Jesus on your life, let me encourage you to embody Philippians 2 where you are right now. Who is around you? What do they need? How can you serve them? Jesus says in John 17 verse 21 that the world will believe the gospel when the family of God lives in unity. God has called you to be a gospel witness to the world by simply being filled with the Holy Spirit and living with the attitude of Christ. Serve those around you in humility. In doing so, Christ not only transforms you, but also the family of God and ultimately, the world. Reflection Prayer The following prayer is from John Wesley and communicates a heart transformed by the humility of Jesus well. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Place me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be put to work for you, or set aside for you, praised for you, or criticized for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and fully surrender all things to your glory and service. And now, O wonderful and holy God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, you are mine, and I am yours. So be it. Amen. By Justin DeBose. Justin is the lead pastor at Alliance Bible Church in Baytown, Texas. He is also a CHMAJ in the USAIR serving as chaplain for the Seventh Psychological Operations Group, PG. A husband to Alana since 2005, they have five beautiful children. He is passionate about training and empowering leaders. Let's go deeper, Philippians 2. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Chapter 4, verse 4. It has now been four or five years since Paul made his last visit to Philippi where he planted the church during his second missionary journey. The Philippian church had always given funds to help finance Paul's needs, and this was no exception. Having heard about Paul's imprisonment, they sent another contribution, and along with it, a man named Epaphroditus to minister personally to Paul's needs. Unfortunately, Epaphroditus becomes ill, almost to the point of death. Paul, who realizes his own death could be close, writes this letter to thank the Philippians for their gift. Out of concern for Epaphroditus and fear that the Philippines might be worried about their dear messenger, Paul decides to send Epaphroditus home along with this letter. In the letter Paul describes his circumstance in prison, exhort the believers in Philippi toward greater unity, and warns them against false teachers. Chapter 2, 1-18 Paul's Loving Encouragement Paul brings the teaching portion of Philippians by encouraging believers to live in unity with one another. The key to unity is to be like-minded and serve others, rather than selfish and preoccupied with self. Christians are to follow in the steps of Christ, who is the supreme example of humility. He was willing to die on the cross for our benefit. Chapter 2, 19-30 Paul's Faithful Friends Next, Paul expresses his deep appreciation for Timothy, who is of proven character and has served alongside Paul with diligence. Paul hopes to send this like-minded man to the Philippians soon. But Paul does not want to forget to praise Epaphroditus, who ministered to Paul to the point of exhaustion and became sick. These two friends, Timothy and Epaphroditus, are examples of the self-practice that ought to mark our lives as Christians. The passage from Philippians 2 in the New International Version of the Bible exhorts believers to emulate Christ's humility and selflessness in their lives. It begins by reminding them of the encouragement, comfort, sharing in the spirit, tenderness, and compassion found in their relationship with Christ. The author, Paul, urges unity and like-mindedness among believers, emphasizing the importance of selflessness and humility, valuing others above oneself. The passage then presents Jesus Christ as the ultimate example of humility. Despite being in the very nature of God, Jesus did not exploit his equality with God but humbled himself, taking on the form of a servant and being obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of his humility and obedience, God exalted him to the highest place, giving him the name above every other name, and one day every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. In summary, 
the passage teaches believers to prioritize humility, selflessness, and unity in their relationships, following the example of Jesus Christ, who humbled himself for the sake of others and was ultimately exalted by God. Tomorrow's Daily Devotion, Showing Compassion to Others Ephesians 4 verse 32, Week 5, Day 3